This week, residential sales have dropped by 14.7% week on week compared to the week before. Welcome to the UK Property Market Stat Show. My name is Chris Watkin. I create the UK Property Market Stat Show each and every week with a special guest. This week it's Christian Stott. We'll come to him in a second, where we look at what's happening in the UK property market right here, right now. This week is week 35, which is checking my calendar, it was Monday the 28th of August, all the way through to Sunday the 3rd of September. And we will be looking at week 35 compared to last week, week 35 compared to the other years, and year-to-date figures to see exactly where the property market is. For those of you who have not watched the UK Property Market Stat Show, the Stat Show is something that you won't see anywhere else. The vast majority of UK property market stats are looking at sales that took place. Let's say, for example, the land registry. That's looking at sales that the ones that's just been re recently released, looking at sales that took place last November and last December. The Halifax and Nationwide are looking at sales that took place in the spring. But we're looking at it right here, right now. So if we know what's happening to the property market now, we can know what's going to happen to the property market stats that you all rely on in six or nine months time. And that's what it's all about. This show is, as I said, for estate agents, it's for letting agents, and anyone who is obsessed about the property market who likes a good stat. Today, I'm joined by Christian Stott. Not in the estate agency at the moment. He has been involved with some of the biggest names in the industry, and he, he lo he's a bit of a data geek like myself. And he has been on the show a number of times, and he's always an excellent value for money, looking at stats in a slightly different way. Um, and we'll be looking at his insight. So, Christian, thanks for joining us today on week 35 of the UK Property Market Stat Show. How are you today, mate? I'm awesome. You? All the better seeing you. Anyway, and I can't believe how beautiful the weather is. I mean, it's just stunning, isn't it? It is absolutely lovely. We're filming this on Wednesday the 6th. Just for the record, I'm wearing my bone cancer T-shirt because this morning was Sanchfest, and that went really well, where we had over 100 estate agents um raising money for the Bone uh, Cancer Research Trust, because uh, Sanjay, who's a big name in the industry, uh, had his operation a couple of days ago, and we've raised nearly £10,000 for that. So well done, everyone that attended that one, and we were all sporting a big orange T-shirt. So as what we, what we always do, ladies and gentlemen, with regard to this show, it's split into three main sections. The first main section is where we look at the national stats. The, the middle section which is, we look at the regional. We don't spend too long on those, but again, they are all available to download for your own personal benefit. And then at the end, we spend 15 or 20 minutes focusing on a town or city. And this week, we're going to a place that's very famous um, in the outskirts of the town. It's got a very famous hospital. Um, and um, or if I was going to say quack, quack, that would also give you a clue. Where are, get, from those clues, Knowing damn well I've already given you the answer. Where are we this week? Aylesbury, and I can't wait because I have no idea about Aylesbury. I'm looking forward to that one, Chris. <laughs> okay. So basically, boys and girls, it's kind of northwest of London, going uh, just uh, around that Leighton Buzzard area uh, near the M40. Um, classic commuter belt stuff. So, ladies and gentlemen, let us dive in to the stats. So as always, we always start off the listings. And you should be able to see the listings there, mate. Can you see that? Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Right. So this week we have listed as a, in a country 26,728 properties. Last week it was 31,258 and the running average is 32. So all of a sudden I'm thinking to myself, Hmm, listings are down. I wonder why that is. We'll come on to that in a second. I'll just whiz through the, the, the graphs that we've got on listings and then we can have a look. So let's just go back and I'll go back in again. Here we go. And the year to date in terms of listings, we have listed 1.14 million houses in the UK year to date. And quite interestingly, we, whilst 2020 was, you know, we were get, getting a catch-up figure on that one. I find it fascinating that if you think about it, look, in 18 and 19, there is a lot more listings, which is interesting. We'll come on to that in a second, what, what relevance that has. Um, yeah. Um, and again, but we are now ahead of 21 and 22. 
The average price of a property to come on the market this week is £433,000. Last week it was 405 the week before 439 Four nine, sorry, three nine four. And the running 2023 running average is 430. So that is interesting because that number is a spike because we've been in a, a, a trajectory downwards. So in June, we were at 440s, 430s, 430s, and then it slowly has been sliding. And then all of a sudden, we've what, gone from 405 up to 433. So I wonder what that's all about. Um, and then We'll just, again, just come back to the stats. There we go. And then in terms of uh, year to, um, sorry, week 35 in isolation to 26,728, like we said, and that's how it compares. So scores on the doors. What's your thoughts on these things, Christian? Sorry, um, couldn't find the mute button, Christian. Um, oh, dear, that's the first time that's ever happened. <laughs> and you know what more's the pity hey um i think that we've seen in general falling prices um it's uh, we've got the august bank holiday to throw into the mix there and what we haven't talked about is is the stock type coming to the market now but there's probably evidence of uh, maybe um higher profile stock coming onto the market now um but it's interesting that there's a spike I don't know whether that's a good sign or not. What do you think? Well, one swallow doesn't make a, a, a doesn't make a spring a, a spring, as they say. Um, I mean, there is in terms of the number of listings, you can quite clearly see here that the pink line is twenty twenty three, and there is a downward drop. But isn't it interesting that nineteen, seventeen, eighteen, and nineteen we've seen a, an equal drop? Because what was uh, there's something something strange happened this week. What, what, uh, I think they call it a, a building society holiday. No, a bank holiday. So it's quite obvious that the bank holiday has an effect in terms of listings. I it? think also with, you, you know, we kind of build that drop as we come towards the end of the summer. August is generally a quiet month. Um, we generally see really high activity now. Um, well, and it'd be interesting. See, she normally she normally kicks back and yeah. kicks in the past. So it, it'd be interesting to see the next week's week thirty six show where she yeah. kicks back. But if you actually and whether that pricing adjusts itself back to where we thought it might be, or whether it stays higher, um, you know, we're down on average for the year, um, what about seven thousand on average over the UK. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it will be interesting to see if that jumps back up again. Well, sorry, yeah, stays so, up or, or drops back down again. So, I mean, isn't it interesting that this week, in terms of the number of listings this week, we are down 14.4%, uh, which, again, just matches very similar to what we saw in, in 17, 18. Yeah, and I, did, the, the, I can't remember back then, to be honest with you. But if you look out of the window now, um, I think people are having their summer late this year because summer's been wet it's been awful um you know you might find that some of that is just governed by the fact that it's beautiful outside could be could be as i said we've had the summer weather and i believe we're going to get it continued for the, a few more days so boys and girls when this comes out on friday i still hope you're putting on your suntan lotion um, and remaining safe out there with the uv rays moving on price reductions and this week we've had a similar reduction where the number of reductions this week was seventeen thousand seven. 140, uh, which again is a, an e a very similar drop of around 15%. Um, um, again, there's a theme coming here of a drop of about 15%. Um, and the average price of a property being reduced is 416, which again, the running average for the last six weeks has been between 379 and 383. So it's been really tight. So What's bit, what what is weird is this is that we've had a jump up of four the the average price of a property being reduced this week four sixteen so is this a blip we don't know okay no. but, uh, but we'll soon find out okay um, there's any questions on this I mean again just to give you an idea number of properties in how does this relate to the number of stock that's being reduced. We're looking at about 14 or 15 percent of UK property markets on the market at the moment being reduced every single month. And that's enough. I thought it'd be higher, if I'm honest with you. Um, uh, I just, 
with the, the direction it's taking, I thought there would be more sort of over to under in terms of valuation to first and maybe even second reduction. So actually, I think the number is lower than I thought it would be, Chris, to be honest with you. OK, well, that, that's a sort of level. I mean, just to give you an idea, and I'm just logging on now, the uh, number of properties that are presently on the market in the UK um, is, and we'll just wait, we're just, just pulling this up on my screen now, that the number of properties for sale, hold on, I'm just could bring it up now, just bring the satellites up now, here we go. And the number of properties for sale going into was 647,543. When you compare- Versus- This is the number of properties for sale in the UK at this moment. Yeah, versus last year? 479,000. Wow. Wow. Yeah. 647 versus 479. Yeah, and yet that's... transactions are down. Yes. So therefore, the number of listings, the number of listings that are coming on the market and the number of sales is widening. I mean, yeah. you've, got, you've got some stats at the moment. Share them with the boys and girls in the state agency land. Well, I mean, we were just talking um, b before we started recording that that average sort of listing to completion ratio is actually quite 64 and a half. I think it is 65%. Um, we've got the mortgage rates are up, base rates up, obviously. Transactions dropped by 22% for the year. I know we're talking week to week, but, you know, we're seeing listings pretty healthy. Pricing changing but it's not dramatic yet it's little drips um and it you don't know whether we're just going to be sort of riding this knife edge for a period of time or whether there's going to be an event um where all of a sudden the graph widens dramatically i think I, it was interesting because the last time we did this you predicted eight hundred and eighty thousand transactions for the year i think you said 880 we'll have to go back to the recording but i think 885 Eight eight five. Yeah, is, that's your this prediction. Is, this is exchange. This is completed, and that yeah, know that until probably the end, um, May June when all the figures are in. Yeah, but you predicted eight eighty by cal eight eight five by calendar year end. Yes. I think you're bang on, um, which means there's there's going to be a lot of uh, aging stock. I mean, just to just to give you an idea of of something, let me just share with share with you this. Um, this particular graph here shows um, the, the yellow line is the number of listings that are coming on each month, and the blue line is the number of sale agreeds. Yeah. So you can see that graph now. Yeah. And, and in this, in 2021, you can quite clearly see that that the that, that listings and sales were really tight. Okay. Yeah. So the yellow, the yellow is listings, the blue is sales, okay. We then went into 2022, and we had a, a the gap where listings were not as were, were slightly were, were similar levels to 21, but the number of sales was not. So we started to get a gap, and then we got a further gap here in 2023. Yeah, so we can quite clearly see here is is whilst you were selling probably 85, 90 percent of the properties that you were putting onto the market in 2021 you are now selling about 60 to 65%. So what are you doing as an estate agent to ensure that you are putting on the right properties on at the right price? Because I posted something last week that says, is that a property will sell if you put it on at the right price. And if you don't put it on the right price, it's either your fault or the vendor's fault. And without sounding overly contentious, Chris, there's plenty of second hand stock there uh, where you've got disgruntled vendors, who've entered the market on promises and they haven't materialized. I think if we look at 21, it's somewhat anomalous because you, you could have sold pretty much anything in 21. Um, I think the gap moving 22, 23 is a really interesting story. It'd be interesting to see where that ends up as we move both through December and into the beginning of next year. Um, but yeah, right now, people are having to work a lot harder hey, for the money, aren't they? But then these are very comparable stats to what we were seeing in 17, 18, and 19. Yeah. Okay. But uh, not necessarily it, what we're used to at the moment. 
Yes. So therefore, what responsibility have estate agents got to ensure that they pivot and work in, in a, basically a market that's very similar to 17, 18 and 19? God forbid it could even, you know, and the way it goes, it could go like the, like we had in 11 and 12 and 13 when we really had to earn our pennies. Mm. What would you yeah. ask me to estate agents on that? Well, I, I think, that, to be honest with you, have really honest conversations on the sofa. Um and walk away from bad deals because I, I still don't think that vendor expectation is aligned to the market as is. And I think with rising borrowing costs, rising cost of living, there's hostages out there. Uh, there's people that want you to hear a much bigger number than the agents want to tell them. And I think it's that honest conversation that's most important. But then it, what is interesting is, is a lot of vendors out there that are just, that just cry out, just, just tell me what you honestly think. And I think we're all guilty of, Judging ourselves by the listing. What's their name then? I've not met them. Uh... Oh, honestly. <laughs> okay, I mean, being it, it's, I totally what is particularly agree. interesting is, is, you know, my daytime job is I'm a ghostwriter for estate agents, and the graph I've just shown you, um, we've done that for 110 locations around the UK, and they're almost identical. No. That the gap between the blue and the yellow is widening. Can you blend completions onto that graph, actually? Because it's an interesting story there, isn't it? Well, obviously, yes, you can, but obviously you're looking at six months yeah. later. Yeah. Okay, and there's that awful gap. Um, yeah. Yeah, interesting. Right, okay, let's get back to let's get back to oh, the... If, if only we had a digital settlements platform. I have no idea what the hell you're talking about, but I like it because <laughs> digital... Why don't you put the word omni-platform in it and the chain, okay. blockchain or something rubbish like that? Right then. <laughs> Sorry, I'm being naughty. I do apologise. Um... Number of growth sales this week. Um, we, as I said, we said at the top of the show, fourteen point seven percent down because this week number of sales seventeen thousand and ninety one. Let me just show you the the graph there. There we go, seventeen thousand and ninety one, which, as you can see, is a little ignoring twenty twenty one and twenty two, um, is a little bit similar, very similar to seventeen, but obviously eighteen and ninety was just. Slightly. Sorry, remind me. Where are we at with price reductions? What do you mean in terms of numbers? Yeah. 17,400. There you go. Interesting when you look at the blobs, isn't it? Yeah, um, yeah isn't it? So I think it, it's, you know, you, you, we talked a moment ago. I think getting it right on that sofa and being willing yeah. to walk away is so important, isn't it? As Joe from Archers in Monmouthshire says, you need to be the first choice, second estate agent, and you've got to have the guts to be able to walk away from a listing if it's too much money. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's it, it really is, guys and girls. Come way. on, you know, don't judge yourself. Okay, that's fine if the glory boys from the corporates want to get paid a listing bonus, but at the end of the day, their stats are telling is that they don't sell as many houses. But the simple fact is this: you're not on the mar- you're not here to put houses on the market. You're on the ha- you're here to put houses on the market to sell to get people moved to the next chapter of their life. And you are killing yourselves by a thousand cuts, getting the benefit of putting too many houses on the market. It looks good. You might get an award at the end of the quarter with a certificate and a cheap bottle of prosecco that's on special offer at three for two for at Morrison's. But at the end of the day, it's all about selling houses and earning the pennies that way. I personally think listings bonus should be banned. I know it never will, but that's just my opinion for, for what it's worth. So gross sales... But also, I think it's probably a good time to talk in the terms there are other methods of sale. And I think in a market like this, uh, a lower to highest pricing strategy um, using bidding isn't a bad idea um, rather than a higher... About, about modern method of sale? Well, I, I, I am talking about the fact there are other methods of sale and having transparent upward bidding is a good way, uh, I think, in a market like this of achieving decent values because it saves that that challenging conversation about a price adjustment or reduction, whichever terminology you want to use. Um, it's that lower to highest approach. which Yeah, I, I, I mean, to be honest with you, the modern method probably only takes into account probably about, I think I worked it out, about 1.4 of sales a year. And I think the issue there is, and again, I'm, um, and I'm, and I don't want to get too close to the phone because I know you've had it in the past, but I think those firms could be a lot better in teaching the industry about modern method and getting the valuers fully 
bought into it. And I still think if you can get a valuer bought into the modern method of sale, it is a fantastic way, A, to get listings and get me, get your vendor away, and three, get paid for it and everyone's happy. But it's your job and your responsibility as valuers to ensure that you, you learn yourself. And if your boss is not doing it, then go to websites like, well, just type in modern method of sale because we're not allowed to do any promotion on this on this show. Type in modern method of sale and go and look at them and go and talk to them. Right, moving on. Gross sales year to date, 767. So we are slightly behind the pace of, of 17, 18 and 19. We'll come on to the percentage on net sales in a second. Let's go full throughs. Um, Sorry, just this? just before we do that, yep. um, gross sales to listings, you've worked that out, haven't you? What was that number? Gross sales to listings. Um, hold on a second. I think we bring that in later, don't we? Okay, sorry. Uh, it's yeah, gro- the gro- gun. yeah, gross sales to uh, 63.94. Uh, last week, 64.9, week before, 64.3. Week before, and comparable to the to, to the years before? Um, let's two seconds, because I, I like you keeping me on my toes. Let uh, me see if I can, I've got the graph here. There you go, year to date. Uh, sorry, that's week standalone. That's not, so the, the long-term average, not for week 35, but the long-term average for the last seven years, 76% gross sales to listings. We are on 63. We are below 17, 18, and 19. Well, we're below everything for okay. the last six years in a row, aren't we? Okay, again, ignore 21 and 22. They were exceptional years. But the bottom line is this, is that if you're putting on overpriced stuff, you're going to be in that bit here and not the stuff that's actually selling. Remember, your job is to sell houses, not list them. Well, fixed costs haven't gone down that much, have they? They, ha- they haven't. And again, I know the adage: we well, need it to. You need it. You need it to to be able to sell it. I know. I understand that estate and letting agents. But the simple fact is this: is how many of you put a house on the market and then are really crap at doing your vendor management, leaving it to floss and floss, and then two weeks becomes four weeks, and four weeks becomes eight weeks, and then all of a sudden we're at the end, twenty weeks, and you've you know you, a vendor contact is hi how's it going we've had so many people look at that's not vendor contact that's after two weeks right we had six people around this is not we need to change the photographs and if that doesn't work we're going to need to change the price and we need to do it within the first four weeks and if you are not having those conversations as valuers i'm sorry you are absconding you are moving your responsibility on because all you're interested in is putting house on the market and not selling them and therefore, you are glorified pizza delivery people or double glazing salesmen that are only interested in the sale in terms of getting the listing and not, oh, you know, I'm on my soapbox today. Oh, there, there you go. Right, full throughs. Full throughs down this week. It's probably because we had Monday off and and they could, <laughs> it happens. It happens. They couldn't um, take that call. There's a lot of voicemails brewed up, huh? But, I mean, look at this. The number of sales that fell through in November. They, they do. You know, if people are on holiday... So that number will spike up. Now, that's a simple, that is a fact of life. And the fall through rate has also dropped uh, to 28.95. Uh, the running average this month, uh, this year, has been 25.31. So, you know, we're still slightly above average on that one, but we're still rocking and rolling. Um, point, sorry, 25.31. 25.31 is the r- running long uh, 2023 sell fall through rate and when we say sell fall through rate we mean this if there's 10 houses that you've sold that week and two have fallen through from your pipeline two as a percentage of 10 is 20 percent hence a fall through rate of 20 percent but given uh, the average is an important number but just looking at the graph uh, which really we're looking at the my right hand half of that graph Yes. Everything we've been reading about um, interest rates, et cetera, falling prices, there's, there's two parts to that graph, the right and the left. And it's quite an interesting picture. If we look at the transition between May to July there, um, sentiment changed, didn't it? Yeah. Um, it going, seems yeah. now to have plateaued somewhat. The, Very much definitely so. a right hand half right hand quarter let's call it of the graph that was a bad description but it'll do um sentiment changed it was very obvious when that happened um it was at four and a half to five wasn't it if memory's yeah 
That was it. Ignore the spike because Christmas always cocks the figures up. But look, remember, in Q4, we were over 40% so most of the quarter. So, you know, it, mm. it's not good out there, but it ain't as bad as it was in Q4. Right. Yeah. Can you get back to me gross sales? Well, we've done gross sales, yeah. haven't we? Ever you want, Chris. As long as it ends in Aylesbury. Okay, then. right. There's a sale fall through. So you can look again, you can download these. Right. Okay. So um, net sales. So therefore, number of net sales this week, 12,144. Last week, 14,159. Week before, 14,4. Week, week on week prior years, though, or week versus week prior well, years. It's not looking pretty, well, is it? Well, but again, look. Okay, look. They all dip. So let's not all have heart attack there. Okay. So now she continues on next week like that. We've got a problem. But they all dip. You know, the yellow line is the average of 17 to 19, dip backs up. Green line is 21, dips backs up. Uh, blue line is 22, dips back up. And hey, presto, there's the mega year of 2020, dips down. Obviously, yeah. it's been a week later. But she dips. That's yeah. just, that's it. It's Easter. It's not Easter. It's it's summer bank holiday. She It's whether she bounces up. Okay. Is that okay? It's not brilliant. I mean, just give you an idea. We are the number of net sales year to date is 578,112, which is 90.5% of the average of 17, 18, and 19. Now, this yep. is something we have to keep an eye on. That figure was at 94 or 95% in the spring. Uh, sorry, in the in the summer. And that has been being shaved off by about 0.2 on average, sometimes 0.3 per week, okay? So the net sales year-to-date is starting to slip by about 1% per month. So if we carry on the way we are going, we are going to be at around 85%, no, 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 86.5% of net sales year-to-date by the end of the year compared to 17, 18, and 19 which means it's hard work out there, guys and girls, isn't it? Wow. And uh, there was some news recently about some of the bills going up. Um, okay, but do remember house prices have gone up since then. Not a huge amount, though, Chris. Okay, so, you know, the average price of the property has gone up since 2018 by in excess of 25%. Yeah, but it's okay. come down this year. What did we say has come down this year? Okay, so Six of those, down- was it? So, well, if it's gone up 25% and you're still charging the same amount, it should be the same, shouldn't it? Mm. Year to August 23, 5, 5.3%. Okay, but again, we're comparing ourselves. If we're down on the 17 or 18 figures, if, our, if we're still charging the same percentage, we are earning more money. So, again, let's not beat ourselves up. I know, you know, I get accused of being too optimistic. I'm, I'm just... Yeah, I am optimistic. I always, if I can see... Well, then we're like Jack Spratt and his wife, aren't we? Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's just... That's just but it, don't get me wrong. It is really, really hard work out there in a state agency to, A, get the houses on the market and get them sold. What are you doing to try and get to be called out originally? And if it, have you got the balls not to walk from away? And then this is the also bit, is this, is what are you doing... You see, where most, you know, if an estate agent calls out agent A, B, and C, and A says 100 grand, B says 100 grand, and C says 130, the, the, and the other agents haven't given a good enough excuse, they'll go with agent C at 130. But this is the really weird thing. I don't know if you have noticed this, Christian, is if the property then uh, gets taken off the market, which agent will it go with, A or B? None of them. It will go with Agent D because Agent A and Agent B have not given them a good enough excuse or kept up the nurturing process. Have they? Agents are rubbish think, at that. I I'm think that's half agent. true. Um, I think if one of A and B was honest in a, you know, this this is it. This is the real picture. Okay. Come back to me if you discover that the real picture was the real picture. I don't think they exclude themselves. And I think if they keep a sort of constant contact cycle over that marketing period, they don't isolate themselves from the opportunity. Oh, there you go. The, a nurture process. But yeah. most agents don't. They just leave it like a fish on the side of a, a Mediterranean quayside, letting it go off. And yeah. also, if we don't make it... People feel embarrassed to go back to you because they don't want to look stupid because they... Yeah, you were right and I was wrong. Mm. I think... Okay. Uh, 
I, I think it's interesting. I think the, 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 the sort of post-COVID years were a little bit more complex because you did have sales rates of, you know, 99, 100% in some businesses. So, you know, it was all about getting the listing because the likelihood of it selling was super, super high. I mm-hmm. think we're back now to a, to a sort of normal market where um, that second listing is generally a lower price with a higher fee and a, an increased level of intent. Um, so I think you're probably right. As to whether D versus A or B, I think that's quite complex. And I think it depends on how you, you did say that if A and B didn't substantiate why their valuation was so much lower than C. No, 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 enough. it didn't. No, all I said was this is that they, they said their bit, but then what they didn't do is nurture them or remove the embarrassment of going back to them. Uh, and, and in which case D deserves it. <laughs> yeah, D deserves it. So the, the the open rhetorical question I'm asking you guys and guys on the state agency is what are you doing? to ensure that if you do lose it, that they don't feel embarrassed to come back to you. Yeah. Indeed. Or more importantly, what are you doing that if you weren't called out the first place? Yeah, what are you, you doing? You made damn sure you called out second time around. You're right. Anyway, let's get back on that horse. So the um, we've just spent, we've done great. These are the net sales, again, a little bit down compared to, you know, we're a couple off. Again, actually, though, if you took out 2020, it's not scaring you off. It's just that we're slow. We're just like salami each month just a little bit behind the 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 running rate um this is the average property that's come on the market we just taken old data from uh, 10 minutes ago um and just comparing what the average price of a property coming on the market at this week we know it's 433 compared to the average house of a property selling 347 that doesn't mean that the average house is being knocked by uh, 80 grand it just means that there are more posher houses coming on the market the, the, the cheaper houses have a higher propensity to sell. Um, down on the previous year, though. Say again? Down on the previous year. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah, fair goes. I'll give you that. But again, long term, long term, we are running at, so in terms of this year, our long term figure, let me just pull up the stats that you keep filling. The average is 20.1% difference. And this week we're at 25. Hang on, I've got I've got your face covering these stats. Let me just wiggle you around a little bit. No, all right. Don't worry, that's me. Don't worry, that was me. Okay, right. Okay, so I think basically these again we probably we don't want don't want to rush Aylesbury. So these graphs are all available to download on my YouTube. Um, Hang on, don't skip that one. Go back to that one. Go on, man. What? what, what, what? Doesn't it just? You 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 do it. You you you. Well, well I, I think mean, that one I've just been really. I've doing a lot of talking today. It bops you on the nose, doesn't it? It you, you know that is not a great conversation to be having with any client ever. And so, if we can see here that the the number of those conversations that that have had to be had, um, it's a challenging time in terms of vendor expectation and happy customers. Okay. Hey. Yeah, 60. I'll give you that. 60. Is, am I blocking it now? No, no, it's all right. No, it's fine. Yeah. Well, for me, it's okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, if you, it's what, what you see is what everyone else sees. I mean, to give you an idea, we've been running this year at 60.4%. It's just that this week it was 66. We, we, but we've been as high as, you know, in late all, late July, early August, we were as high as 72 for a couple of weeks. It's hard so, work, though, isn't it? It's again, just hard re- work. Okay. But remember, Remember, this is a bank holiday week week, and it is going to script these are these are standalone figures. But it's not a movable movable fees. This week's pretty similar every year. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's bank, like I'll, yeah. Okay, yeah. I'll give you that. I will give you that. Okay. So um we're just gonna whiz through these. These are the national stats that green is good, red is bad. The, uh, due to the nature of that Zoom is not particularly high definition, we're not going to spend an awful lot of time on these. Again, you can download these from the YouTube channel in the description. And just for the record, I'm happy for you to use these stats internally and on your valuations, but with, with that, but not on social media unless you specifically ask me, because some of these do get used by my clients, um, and I have to keep something back down to Christian uh, for the people that pay me my wages. Okay, because by 
Just so you're aware, I'm a property statistician and I create content for agents about their property markets. But on valuations, I've got no issue with you at all using these on your iPads and showing the people it's more social media. So these are the, these are the stats looking at the regions. Green is good, red is bad. And you just get a flavor. Again, we're not going to spend too long on these because we want to crack through to the sexy part, which is Aylesbury. So you can all have a look at these sort of stats. Again, please, please, please. Red is good. Green is bad. Look at your area, see how it changes and see how it compares to your stats. So you get a flavor of where you are going with the market. Um, anything on this before we go to Aylesbury? Well, to be honest with you, Chris, I can't read it very well. I noticed a big red line across inner London, which is probably a conversation if we had more time. Um, it's but been I, there I, all the time, mate. London is a is a weird market. Inner London, particularly, and when we say inner London, we're talking about N W E S W S E, which you know is a market I don't know particularly okay. well. It's an interesting red line there on the. So again, it is it is a different marketplace. Um, and then as you move out, it, it, it's, it's as you would expect. London is weird, weird as what's the name. Outer London is a bit more normal. Southeast. And then as you go out, get and then East Midlands and East Anglia is a bit more normal. And then it goes the other way where, and then as you go north, then Scotland is a world to its own. And I can say that because I have got Scottish blood in me. Right then, uh, I think what I'd like to do now is go and look at Aylesbury. So shall we go and have a look? So Christian, we are using the 20EA Insight platform, as you know, bit of a fanboy, I know you are too. And the 20EA Insight platform is kind of right move plus with rockets strapped on it with lasers and go faster stripes. This is the dog's dangles when it comes to uh, market share analysis and, and how, good, how good you are or how not so good you are. Um, this piece of software is available free of charge to estate agents. They can have up to three postcodes free of charge through the 20 EA Insights platform. And you can have a look there. If you want more postcodes, you have to pay a little bit of money. And the, I'm not here to recommend them uh, or, or get any kickback. So you can't use my name, but the prices are, in my humble opinion, very reasonable, especially if it tells you what what it's good at but go to them and try the free version because i think you'll be absolutely amazed with how awesome it is but as i said i'm not being paid to do this and i'm getting no kickbacks and do not mention my name it's all right i've covered myself on that one haven't i is that all right very much so got to got to right okay so here we go so the first thing we are going to look at is the number of properties that are for sale in aylesbury and for the purposes of this we are looking at the all of these postcodes here which is um, HP 17, HP 18, zero, because the rest of it is off to the uh, west and it doesn't really is in the Aylesbury uh, sphere. All of HP 19, 20, 21 and 22. So just be aware that that is the patch that we're looking at. Uh, some of you say, well, some of that's not Aylesbury. Well, that's what I decided was Aylesbury um, due to the postal towns. OK, isn't it interesting? Let's look at Jul Let's look at August because that was the last full month. Um, Going out into August, there were 1,429 properties available for sale in, in those in the Aylesbury and Greater Aylesbury area, compared to 920 in 21 and 1,087. So we have had a third, well, sorry, a late 30s percentage increase from last year and a 45, 50% increase from uh, 2021. So you can quite clearly see here that the number of properties for sale has gone up by 50% nearest damn it in two years, which is good news, there's more choice, but if we're not selling as much, there is an issue there of whether you're actually, you know, putting the house on to sell or you're putting it onto list. Um, again, you can just have a look at that. Let's just have a look at C. Now what we, and there's a spike there. So hold on a second, we're gonna knock new build off because that does, it's normally new builds that, that um that take that off so I'll take right that's good so it quite clear so i'm going to talk and you just jump in when you want to okay is that all right christian mm. so the big daddy estate agent looks like it's michael anthony and their market share in terms of properties on the market not new listings although there is a connection appears to be pretty stable and if i was to put a trend line through that bad boy I would actually say that she has been growing very slightly 
in since January 21. Let's go and look at Brown and Merry. Okay, they look like they had a little bit of a rough patch in the late 21, but looks like they've been coming back very nicely. Well done, guys. So we've got Williams Estates. They also looks like they had a bit of a rough patch in 22. Looks like they're coming back, which is nice to see. Let's look at Connells. Again, pretty stable there, but going up slightly. That's interesting. Mm. Okay. David George. George David, sorry. Again, pretty static there. Uh, Tim Russ. Okay, pretty static around that 5% mark. Chancellors. Oh, dear, guys. Looks like your market share has been dropping there. Christopher Pallet. Okay, looks like their market share has been dropping from 6% and now it's hovering around 25 Not sure what's happening there, guys. Uh, Hillards, pretty static. And Alexander and Co, they've been great. Well done, Alexander and Co. Um, yeah. Any thoughts on this before we actually start looking at new instructions and sales? Not really. I think um, a little bit like where we looked before, we've got a you know one agent that really does seem to be... Um, Number one in town for new instructions, which you could see. Uh, we've got a couple in the top four that are Connell's, Brown and Mary's sequence, isn't it? Um, Williams. Williams are an independent. Pretty solid, yeah. Um, interesting numbers. I think the Michael Anthony, just if you just jump back onto Michael Anthony, where are they at in the price band? We're coming to that in a second. Okay. Okay. But this is it. Bra Brown and Mary are part of the Connell sequence group, aren't they? If memory serves me well. Yeah. It's not too far away from their central office, is it? So that's good to see. Okay, right. Uh, let's move on to the next screen where we actually look at new. We're going to look at new instructions. So again, isn't it interesting that Brown and Michael that well, they've had sixteen point six five percent of market share of stock, but when we actually look at new instructions, let's look at again. Let's switch off new builds because again, we well, that's just making that spike. It doesn't. And I tell you what I might do is this, is I'm just going to take, because we're only a few days into September, it really does, uh, technical term, cock the figures up. It's a technical Grantham term. So here we go. So we'll take it back to the end of September. So go. what's this? This is stock on market or sales we're looking at now? This is, right. So now we've looked at stock on market. Now we're looking at new instructions. Okay. Okay. So there's going to be a bit of a relevance. There's, uh, there's a, bit of, a bit of a connection. So... Interestingly, so the average of 443 is the average price that's come on the market for new instructions here between the 1st of Jan and the 30, uh, 21 and 31st of August, 443. Mm. So it's I'll quite a way above national average, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. Nice, well, they, smart place. Yeah, well, it's got Aylesbury Ducks, mate. What, what more do you want? The Stoke Mandeville. I, so, no, just... I made it clear to you earlier. I didn't. I thought Aylesbury was in Somerset, so I'm being totally yeah. real idea. Yeah. Are you good at computers? I've got to worry about you. <laughs> any maps, have you? I'm normally pretty good at geography. It was just Aylesbury. I didn't yeah. know where that was. Oh, there you go. Eh? Well, you're missing out on something of beauty there. Right, okay then. So let's have a look at what people put the houses on the market for. So Michael Anthony, 364. So they are obviously... They're a big agent. They're 16% mm -hmm. of the market, uh, in and, but they appear to be the starter homes and the bread and butter stuff. And that is quite quite a jump down, 364 from 443. I would normally expect the big a bigger agents to be uh, to be a little bit closer. So that obviously shows that they are dominant in that middle 300 to 500 mark. Uh, you know, so And you can quite clearly see here on the graph here. Let's go and look yeah. at Brown Berry. They also, but not as low as 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 as, as Michael Anthony yeah. at three nine two. Okay, and uh, let's go and look at Williams, three seven five. So again, yeah. we are still below the average. So there must there's going to be some interesting stuff here. Who's who is the upper quartile agents? Here we go. Connell's at three seventeen. So they're even in terms of they're really starter homes. David George three seven one. So Tim Russ, right? It looks like Tim Russ is the Silver Spoon Estate agent. Sorry. Okay. Well, like six oh six. Keep going. I, I I wonder if there's another one there somewhere. Chances. We are going to specifically look at the upper quartile in a second. Okay. Yeah. Chancellors. Christopher Pallet. Well, oh, Pallets. There you go. They seem to be posh. Alexander's three two five. Again, lower to middle. And Hilliards three two five. 
Okay, fair goes then. I tell you what, let's go look at the upper quartile for new instructions. Okay, so if the average is 443, I'm going to take that from, six, let's try 600 to start with. And remember, we are dealing here with the countryside as well, which I'm going to go for half a million just for what's same giggles. No, I'm not actually. Hold on a second. Let's take that so the numbers are go. lower than I expected. Have you picked postcodes which are very much centered in the... So the half of the half of the postcodes are town center of Aylesbury, yeah. and the others are villages. Because I got I had feedback saying we want to look. It's not fair for us in the villages because we don't do with the towns. So yeah, okay, you know. So this is your upper quartile. Uh, let's just double check the figures there. Hold on a second, two seconds. Again, my apologies to anyone that's not in Aylesbury. Eight six five. So I want upper quartile. I want that to be two about two thousand. Let's have a look. Okay, I'm going to go 500. It's around Not 500. what I expected there, Chris, if I'm honest with you. So therefore, again, here we go. Tim Russ, they're, they're the daddy -os when it comes to that. Let's just not... Yeah, what fine and country doing? Nothing, not at all. Not not playing at all, really. No, just price-wise. Fine and country. Hold on. Right. Okay, but... Interestingly, Michael Graham, so again, we're just looking at the price range there. So we're looking at three quarters of a million above. And Michael Graham are more of a going up to Milton Keynes in the Bedford area, that sort of area. He, um, good agent. But it looks like Tim Russ there is the daddy. Well done, Tim. Um, so again, there's a potential opportunity there for Michael Anthony if he wanted to grow into that posh agency. But looking at his website, I would be very tempted to have a, 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 a different brand uh, if you were going to go and beat, if you wanted to beat those, or your other option is you potentially could go and open up another branch. I've looked at their website. They've only got one branch, which I think is very smart. They've become the king daddy agent. So remember, if you are going to open up a second office, that is a, have you ever opened up a second office when you were an agent? Uh, not a second, no. No, it's probably the eighth or ninth. Um... The second one is the killer one. I'm sure. Five I'm out sure. of six, did you know? Here's an interesting stat: five out of six second offices fail. Okay. Wow. And, okay, and now that's anecdotal evidence, but I used to be national sales manager for Belvoir, and I do keep an eye on these things. Well, I'll fail this wrong, not closed down, but just do, don't do particular. Okay, let me turn that around. Five out of six age, uh, second offices don't do very well. The one, out, the two reasons I've seen in all my years on why an estate agents work really well. Second office is this. You either put a mini me in your existing office and you go and up at the second one. Right. Okay. Or the other way. Um, or you put an equity partner in there. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, there is that never a new manager in a new office. So I suppose that taking that someone that knows how to do it, I think that's an interesting one. It's just my opinion. I mean, it, it, I could be talking rubbish. So, well, no, I think I think it's an industry that the the the, the opportunity to scale is is perhaps tougher in other industries um, because you have got that geographical disparity. Um, I mean, you I mean, find I, that technology's aided that over the years. Let's just have a quick look at sales. So, Michael Anthony have got seventeen percent of the sales. How much percentage of the sale uh, of the list new instructions, and they have. We'll just wait for it to come through. 20% of the sales. That's interesting. So we'll just mm. flip between the two. Whilst Williams have got 7.16% of the new instructions and 7.82% of the sales. Okay. Um, Connell's 5.99% of the instructions, 5.05 of the sales. Chancellors, let's go to Chancellors, 4.74% of the listings. And sold with the contract 4.87. So that, that's interesting. In fact, I think what we're going to do now is instead of flicking between the two, let's go through to my favoriteist, which is this magic kit here. Okay. So again, those of you in Aylesbury, if you're not in Aylesbury, you can switch off. You should have uh, bailed out minutes ago because this might be boring as hell but again this is the 20 ea insights platform which again if you put um if you buy this is what you can use with it so, so this is last 12 months now isn't it rather than uh the two last years 12 months. Yeah. yeah so bottom right hand corner 
the number of properties that have come on the market in the last 12 months is 7.79% higher than the previous 12 months before that. So therefore, uh, if we're talking September 22 to September 23, there are 7.79% mm. more listings than September 21 to September 22. Okay. So the online agents share 4.50, but where are they on the list? Uh they are they, there's a lot of them and they they it's like salami they all do add up your purple bricks and your strikes and your things like that okay, okay. so let's just switch off the um okay there we go hold on so you just have to scroll down and you find them down here okay okay so you can quite clearly see here that if you are below 7.79 on your listings you're not growing by the market so you can quite clearly see that alexander and co are about the same george david have dropped tim russ you're down a bit christopher pellet you're down and chancellors are down whilst williams trade night i mean interestingly michael anthony eight you're a big agent so to keep treading water well done on that one but you know some of these guys are growing up okay um we put all this into a graphical format here and you can see what's happening. So that's this year versus last year. So you can see Michael Anthony is moving from left to right. Brown and Mary going Not left. going up and down though. So they're all sort of focused on their, there's a couple in the in the lower market share that are focused on their price band. Yes. Whereas Michael Anthony, just similar sorts of customer base demographic. Yes. Um, and you can quite focusing quickly. on the volume. Yeah. Find a country dealing with the posh stuff and Michael Graham as well. Again, they deal with the posh stuff in the villages as mm. well. Okay. Okay. So there's a lot of data going on in this graph. And this is where I love this because estate agents are always saying, how can I prove that I'm worth my money? And there are the next two, this screen and the next screen are pure gold. Okay. A absolutely pure gold. Right. So anyone that's watching this, I don't want you to look at new instructions or sort of the contract, or form throughs, or price changes. I just want you to look at the pure exchanged or withdrawn. Because as we all know, those of you who have not watched the show before, a property will only leave an estate agent if she exchanges or withdraws. You concur? A property will only leave the books of an estate agent if she exchanges or withdraws. Yes. Yep. So therefore, out of the properties that... Michael Anthony put on the market. Or, 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 no, set to sell or fall through. through and refuses to come back to the market. Is that count as the withdrawal? Yeah, that's the withdrawal, isn't it? Okay. It's been withdrawn All from right. your books. Okay. If the sale falls through and it goes back on the market, she's still on your books. Yeah, all right. Okay. Yeah. So let's have a look at this. Michael Anthony, 59.26% of, so the average number of in Aylesbury in the last running 12 months. 51.67% of houses that have come onto the market, that have left estate agents' books, sorry, have exchanged contracts, whilst 48.3% have withdrawn. Now, of course, some of those might go back to another agent and go on the market, but the simple fact is this, just, just under one in two houses that have come onto Aylesbury books, in the la uh, that have left agents' books, have remained unsold. What a waste of opportunity and money there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and uh, why? Um, it's. Uh, yeah. Okay. Don't get it. Now, if we go back, I've got to put that that now again, we could look at that to our heart's content. But I just want to pull up this particular graph, which I have done. You've still got the builders in there. Is that right? I can see David Wilson there. Still got the colour, so you have yeah, to take okay. a slight pinch of salt. Okay, so can you see a blue graph now that says which? Well, the state? builders don't um, publish SSTC, do they? Is that right? I can't they remember. From the... but, but again, in, on the whole picture of things, it's not going to screw the figures up. A great. Right. Let's be honest; it doesn't really matter what the builders are doing; it's what you're doing against your competitors. Mm. So, can you see a graph that says Aylesbury, which estate agent sells that exchanges and completes the most? I can. That particular graph is what you've just seen on that. And the bottom line is this, Michael Anthony will exchange contracts on 59.3% of the houses that they that, that, that have left their books. But there's some, now that's not bad for a number one agent that's twice as big as anyone else. Mm. But well done, George David and Tim Russ, who are at this bigger sort of levels. 
And then you've got the Connells and your chances, which are more corporates at 53s and 49s. And Brown, so again, Brown and Mary, they're a corporate as well. Nothing wrong with corporates, just explaining what they are. Um, there's quite a difference there. I mean, if I was George David and going up against, say, Connells, I would say Mrs. Miggins, with me, you've got a three and four chance of selling, whilst with, with someone else, you've got a less than one in two chance. Mrs. Yeah, Con especially if that's married to asking to achieve data as well, then, yeah. Which we're going to come on to in a second. I mean, this is powerful stuff, mate. Isn't it? So let's come back to the to the graph itself. And that's where these stats come in. So therefore, you know, Michael Anthony 59, Brown and Mary 53, Connell's at 49, Williams at 67. Now, again, some of these, you know, if we go and look at the upper quartile, because some of these are, you know, I think Tim Russ was a posh agent, but again, oh, you know, he's at 67, which is not bad actually for a posh agent. Normally the posher houses don't sell so much, so they get dragged down a bit. Uh, yeah, um, interesting. Let's just have a quick look at the upper quartile to see what sort of difference that makes. So we'll go 5 million, 3 million, 2 million, 1 million, 750. And you quite clearly see that Michael Graham is the daddy agent. Now, interestingly, Michael Graham and Tim Russ exchange contracts on 54, but you've got some other smaller agents that are only exchanging on 21s and 22s. Yeah. Hamlet and Har Hamlet Hayward. 72 well done guys small numbers but still very good um yeah not bad at all should we move on and look at the next screen yeah there we go okay so um this okay. actually yeah this 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 is this is a, this is a data interesting group. picture there for this area i think yeah okay so the first graph is, the first part is, this is almost like get agent, my words, not theirs, where basically the, how much did you put the house on the market for compared to the uh, automated valuation model? So therefore, what's happened here is Michael Anthony, 20 EA have done, a, done an automated valuation model on all those 644 houses and then worked out how much of the value was put on the market for and over and above. I told you this was good. This is right move plus with lasers and glitter balls. So 1.58, so Brown and Mary at 2.8, Connell's at 2.3. So therefore, is it interesting, isn't it interesting that you know, Tim Russ only puts his houses on the market at 0.86% above the automated valuation model? Which So basically, this graph here is shows overvaluing. Chancellors, 3.92. This graph here shows overvaluing. And it tells a story. It's unusual to see this data represented with every agent past the line. Um, now, they're not a long way past the line. That's the other thing that's interesting about Aylesbury is the amount of um, addition beyond the AVM is less than I'm used to looking at, but the amount of agents past the line is more. It's quite interesting. Bit of it's a knife fight valuation right. process there right it gets even more interesting what price did you actually sell the house for compared to your original asking price so therefore michael michael anthony put the house on the market 1.58 percent over what they think the avm is worth mm. it doesn't really matter whether the avm is good or it's good don't get me wrong but if they're all being using the same model it should you know it's comparing apples with apples and therefore, they get 2.45% off the original asking price. Therefore, you go and look at Brown Merry. They put 2.8% over the asking over the AVM and get 3.31 less. It, then now all of a sudden, look at Connells. They've put the property on the market for 2.31%, but they're getting 4.16% less. And the one that screams at me is look at Chancellors. This is this is your story, boys and girls, about if you want proof. If you want proof that overvaluing kills a property, look at chancellors. Nothing wrong with chancellors, but according to these stats, and look at Hart as well, they're putting they're overvaluing by 3.92 and 3.62 respectively. And look at Taylor's at 3.2 as well. But look at what they're having to drop off their price. They have 3.6, 3.63, 3.73, and 7.6. 
So if if you need to prove to to an if you if you had this bit of software, and I'm not selling this software, ladies and gentlemen, but if you had this piece of software and you had this on your laptop, you can prove, Mrs. Miggins, this is what it will cost you because this is what this is the brilliant thing. Okay, I know I'm a bit of a fanboy. Is this percentages percentages? Let's go for pound notes. If all of them put on a five hundred thousand pound house, what would each achieve for it? Michael Anthony four nine five, Brown and Mary. 497. Connells, 490. Williams, 503. George David, 488. Hart, 483. This is, if you're arguing, you know, if we have to put this into a graph, okay, let's, let's go and put this into a graph. Hold on, let's just sort that out. Hold on. New share. These are the top nine estate agents in Aylesbury, what all of them would get a £500,000 house for. So if you're arguing the toss to say Williams between George David and, and you're saying, well, my fee's £2,000 more, this, this shows you, yeah, but I'm going to get you an extra £15,000 more. Mm -hmm. Remember, as Tom Panos says, the cheapest estate agent isn't the one with the cheapest fee. It's the one that gives you the more money in the pocket at the end of the day. And that just shows you if you have to pay two grand extra to get 15 grand back. What's your thoughts on that? What do you expect them to be? I think it's, I think it's a really interesting thing. And I think it's, um, it's not the easiest thing to articulate to a customer. No. Um, but I do think it's really important conversation to have because you, you, I didn't. I, I didn't. I, I haven't heard that from Tom Panos, who obviously is such a legend. But, but I totally agree that that back pocket takeaway value is the all important yeah. one. Um, and I don't think it's spelled out well enough. Okay. Um, a lot of the yeah. time, but you, you've you've talked with me about that data before, and you know I absolutely love it because I, I think that it's really important to see what someone says they will do versus what they will do. Um, this is the magic thing is this, Mrs. Miggins, you're arguing over a thousand pounds when you're going to lose 15. Mm. It is interesting that, 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 that every agent's passed the line there. I wonder how much of that is also driven by vendor expectation. Again, and we're talking the last 12 months. So we're going to have mm. a decent market back end of last year Yeah, coming off because we were exchanging stuff. You know, stuff that was exchanging in Q to quarter four was stuff that was sold in Q1, Q2 of 22. Well, you've a... got slightly, I mean, actually, the the the, the valuation um, to AVM ratio isn't huge. Um, we have looked at low uh, sales rates and quite high withdrawal rates. So it looks to me like it's quite a tough market because... <laughs> yeah. You lose customers potentially because you can't get them the money they want. Um, it, yeah, it looks like a lot of hard work over there. So, again, interestingly, just so you can look at these stats, the average £500,000 house is presently selling for 493 So, So, again, even if you are just a bit of below, you know, if you were at 495 and you say, well, that's not as good as Connell's, you can still actually say, well, well it is as good as Connell's, but someone else slightly higher – all you have to do is you can just knock this on the head here like that. So you can get, you know, you can hide them like that. And then all of a sudden you're looking even more awesome. Obviously you can't do that too much, but again, you have the facility to do that. Okay. But again, it just shows you how you are compared to your 493. Right. Let's just move on. How quickly do estate agents sell houses? Let's have a quick look. Okay. So we'll pull this up and quite clearly, uh, da, da, da. well, that's, it's not right. I'll just have to do that manually. Hold on a second. Here we go. Hold on. I think it was HP 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22. It's nearest, damn it. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. Right, here we go. So it looks like new in NI, new instruction, solves it with contract. So in terms of the agents that sell houses the quickest, it's quite obvious that Hillards are the agents that sell the houses the quickest, whilst Chancellors are the slowest in the top 10. These are the days. Let's see how good the agents are at sales progression. Best estate agent out there, Tim Russ at 123, 
and chances at one three nine. Okay, and then we put. So this them... is yeah, this is days two, isn't it? Yes. So, so what are we looking at? That I mean, I, I, I'm looking at like one hundred and sixty-five to one hundred and seventy days is the best you're going to get in that market. Yeah, the UK average. Ouch. At the moment, okay, the UK average at the moment is about one hundred and eighty days. Nearest, damn it, ran there. It was when I looked. Okay, um, but there's a huge, you know, there's a difference there. And again, some of the the reason I like NI new, new instruction to completion is some agents hang back instructing solicitors until, say, surveys are back, which means that their time on market is longer, but their 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 sale agreed to completion date is much shorter as well. Okay, um, yeah, I think much more to say on that one. Really, let's move on and look at lettings and. Um, Wow. Okay. I think, well, so, you know, we're looking at a market with quite high withdrawal rates. And um, I think, you know, I guess we could probably say this about anywhere in the United Kingdom at the moment. I, I, well, sorry, not in England and Wales. Um, I, I, I still think that picture just says one thing, that that at listing do as much as possible to get the property ready to sell. Because the exposure to withdrawal and cancellation with those time frames is – Chronic. Agreed. Um, which well, so it shouldn't be taking So that is that long. getting the legal pack ready, getting it all sorted, getting the paperwork in, getting the solicitors in? Nailing down the, the material information piece. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, all again, of that. you know, and, and I tell you right now, what amazes me is a couple of things which I, may, that I feel the industry just don't embrace. Number one is reservation agreements. Fall through rates of 7% or less. And the other one is outsourced sales progression. The vast majority of uh, the vast majority of outsourced sales progressions are doing it in eleven to twelve weeks, and that's whole chain. So even if you've got shitola agents in the chain, they're taking control of it and driving it forward. Okay. Okay. I think um, it, I, I wouldn't necessarily isolate reservation agreements to say actually customers should be given a spectrum of options and sufficient information to be able to choose from those options which best suits their property their personal situation and their price expectation and i think in terms of sales progression that's a difficult one because there's an element where it's about manpower um, there's an element where it's about partnerships and you know actually are you working with the right people and there's an element where it's about competitors that you know in the towns and villages in which you operate do you have people there that are actually dragging your own cash flow um, away from you through their failure to to bring the impetus that's needed into the the, the sales journeys? I think with the the I, I think with the outsourced sales progression, I don't necessarily take such a stand. I think there are agency businesses who absolutely nail sales progression and yes, do an I incredible job that. of it. But if you think about it, they nail it because they, they don't, it isn't just a, an add on job to the neg. There is actually a specific department, isn't it? I, I, well, yes, that's true. I think if I'm honest with you, it's cultural. And I think if you look at the job of somebody who is negotiating, doing viewings, valuations, etc., sales progression, file chasing is not their first call of the day. It's their last. If you look at someone whose role it is to bring that money home, Sales progression is their first call of the day, and that's cultural. And I think that's the only way really to consider it is, is it everything to you to deal with these problems, to, to, to fix the challenges, to get the information flowing, to get people aware of what's going on, or is it not? And if it's not, I don't think it should be your job. I think you should focus on you know, getting new instructions, um, getting viewing done, getting yeah, because negotiated. What you tend to find is this, the skill set of someone either getting a new instruction or getting a property sold is quite often not the same skill set about sales progression. Well, it's I, the priority in their day, which is most important. A house that's already yeah. sold, negotiated, done deal. Which was fine in 21 because the property would have gone anyway and it didn't matter because somebody else would buy it. But now, still took quite this thing's time, going up and sales going down, you've got to, you've got to hang on to every bloody sale possible. Right, let's finish off with lettings, okay? So we quite clearly see that open rent has ooh, a good chunk of the market there, 12% of the market. Alexander & Co., which were around 7 or 8 on sales. They appear to be the Daddios, Brown, Merry & Connells and Chancellors. Yeah. I always find it really interesting where you see open rent at the top of the list because there is a, 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 a real belief system around landlords requiring, desiring that personal touch and being able to walk into a branch and, 
look people in the eye, but actually you see open rent climbing the ladder in certain areas where they operate. It's uh, it's quite interesting. Indeed. Okay, um, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of the Aylesbury uh, part of the show. I'd like to give final words to Christian about this week. I think it's an interesting week, more because we don't know what's coming next week yet. And, and, and I think that uh, we could be at that change point. Um, not a change point, that's silly. I, I think it's an interesting week in that the numbers are saying that Prices are being reduced, um, lots of those, that the actual numbers in terms of what agents can expect to put in the bank are down um, from where they need to be. Um, and I think that it, it's it's really a catalytic probably story there to act um, because I think and, – and I don't want to – pick a side of the fence over you know that do more optimism uh, there's enough people doing that on social media but what i do think is those numbers are lower than they ought to be and that means that the cash is going to be less than we would like it to be and on that note thank you for your input today christian we look forward to seeing you back in a couple of months on the show uh, but more importantly we'd like to thank you for watching the show uh, as always um, if you want to download any of the graphs they're available to download in the write up section um, the, we'll, be, we'll be back next week for the next show um, if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel um, you can get the it delivered to you but also at the very end there is a playlist and if you save that playlist whether you're subscribed or not you, often you will get this show 24 hours in advance by ha by having the link to that. So save that. She always appears on a Thursday, uh, Thursday night, or ready for Friday morning in Property Industry LA. Thank you for watching. If you've got any towns that you want us to look at, we've got a long list, but always happy to look at other towns and add those too. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Christian. And uh, we'll see you, estate agents, letting agents, and anyone that's interested in the property market on week 36 of the UK Property Market Show next weekend. Thanks very much. Lovely to see you. Bye.